टाइफएड एंड पैराटाइफएड और एंटरिक फीवर्स टाइफएड एंड पैराटाइफएड फीवर्स व्हिच आर ट्रांसमिटेड बाय द फीकल ओरल रूट आर इंपॉर्टेंट कॉजेस ऑफ फीवर इन द इंडियन सबकॉन्टिनेंट सब सहारन अफ्रीका एंड लैटिन अमेरिका एल्सवेयर दे आर रिलेटिवली रेयर एंटरिक फीवर्स आर कॉज्ड बाय इंफेक्शन विथ सलमोनेला टाइफी एंड सलमोनेला पैराटाइफी ए एंड बी After a few days of bacteremia the bacilli localize mainly in the lymphoid tissue of the small intestine resulting in typical lesions in the pears patches and follicles these swell at first then ulcerate and usually heal after clinical recovery about 5% of patients become chronic carriers that is continue to excrete the bacteria after one year the bacilli may live in the gall bladder for months or years and pass intermittently in the stool and less commonly in the urine now the clinical features typhoid fever Clinical features are outlined in box 1142. The incubation period is typically about 10 to 14 days, but can be longer, and the onset may be insidious. The temperature rises in a step ladder fashion for four or five days, with malaise, increasing headache, drowsiness, and aching in the limbs. constipation may be caused by swelling of lymphoid tissue around the ileocecal junction although in children diarrhea and vomiting may be prominent early in the illness the pulse is often slower than would be expected from the height of the temperature that is relative bradycardia at the end of the first week a rash may appear on the upper abdomen and on the back as sparse slightly raised rose red spots which fade on pressure it is usually visible only on white skin cough and epistaxis occur around the 7th to 10th day the spleen becomes palpable constipation is followed by diarrhea and abdominal distension with tenderness bronchitis and delirium may develop if untreated by the end of the second week the patient may be profoundly ill paratyphoid fever the course tends to be shorter and milder than that of typhoid fever and the onset is often more abrupt with acute enteritis the rash may be more abundant and the intestinal complications less frequent this is the box shows clinical features of typhoid fever in the first week fever headache myalgia relative bradycardia constipation diarrhea and vomiting in children end of first week rose spots on trunk splenomegaly cough abdominal distension diarrhea end of second week delirium complications then coma and death if untreated box 1143 shows complications of typhoid fever bowel perforation hemorrhage septic foci bone and joint infection meningitis cholecystitis toxic phenomena myocarditis nephritis chronic carrier persistent gall bladder carriage complications these are given in box 1143 hemorrhage from or a perforation of the ulcerated pears patches may occur at the end of the second week or during the third week of the illness a drop in temperature to normal or subnormal levels may be falsely reassuring in patients with intestinal hemorrhage 
Additional complications may involve almost any viscous or system because of the bacteremia present during the first week. Bone and joint infection is common in children with sickle cell disease. Now the investigation. In the first week, diagnosis may be difficult because in this invasive stage with bacteremia, the symptoms are those of a generalized infection without localizing features. Typically, there is a leukopenia. Blood culture establishes the diagnosis and multiple cultures increase the yield. Stool cultures are often positive in the second and third weeks. The Vidal test detects antibodies to the O and H antigens but is not specific. Now the management. Antibiotic therapy must be guided by in vitro sensitivity testing. Chloram phenicol 500 mg 4 times daily, ampicillin 750 mg 4 times daily and cotrimoxazole 2 tablets or IV equivalent twice daily are losing their effect due to resistance in many areas of the world, especially India and Southeast Asia. Fluoroquinolones are the drugs of choice, example ciprofloxacin 500 mg twice daily. If nalidixic acid screening predicts susceptibility, but resistance is common, especially in the Indian subcontinent and also in the UK. Extended spectrum cephalosporins, ceftriaxone and cefotexim are useful alternatives but have a slightly increased Treatment failure rate. Azithromycin 500 mg once daily is an alternative when fluoroquinolone resistance is present but has not been validated in severe disease. Treatment should be continued for 14 days. Pyrexia may persist for up to 5 days after the start of specific therapy. Even with effective chemotherapy, there is still a danger of complications recruitance of the disease and the development of a carrier state. Chronic carriers were formally treated for four weeks with ciprofloxacin but may require an alternative agent and duration as guided by antimicrobial sensitivity testing. Cholecystectomy may be necessary. Prevention Improved sanitation and living conditions reduce the incidence of typhoid. Travelers to, to countries where enteric infections are endemic should be inoculated with one of the three available typhoid vaccines, two inactivated injectable and one oral live attenuated.